So we're in an antique shop, so it's a little low key, but I suspect that we are gonna get a ton of people because the tribal false faces are back in stock, everybody. You looking around, you seeing anything you like? Yeah, right, for starters, I'm looking for some uh, Chicago Fair uh, near the uh, This is from the World's Fair. Is it? Yeah, 1933. Uh, this was, a uh, yeah, it was part of the Century of Progress exhibit. Uh, this is the- Century uh, of Progress. Mm -hmm. That was known as an auto arranger closet. So we were, we've been at this for a few days, and then it's, uh... So it's, it's still in good condition. Well, it's funny you say that, because I, I actually was... I'm not trying it with the vintage clothes, because... Uh -huh. But the, um... We just grabbed a bunch of this stuff from here. If you take... You would throw this, like... It was almost the first hamper. You'd throw your... you just throw your clothes into the bottom of your wardrobe. You know, you have your shoes untied. You just kick them off and throw them in. You know, then it would have been lace boots back then. Right. But, you know, definitely the still, still the same kind of laces. So if this will not snag, that goes. And if I turn, organizes, organize three times counterclockwise. I'm gonna have to fight it a little. You don't have to hold the handle, but I've been having to hold the handle and pull back. Yeah. And it hangs them. Wow. It ah. straightened the shoes out too. Yeah, yeah, it does a, you know, does a little, ties it them tie up. the shoe? Yeah, it ties the shoes. I know, that's exactly what I thought. Well, you know what else they had too was the, uh, there's one setting on it that would do a, like, outfit match. That's, you would put your clothes together like that. And outfit match, this would stay up at top. And because, you know, clothes have different weights, so the frock, you know, your frock would be heavier. So, let me see if I can grab it. You go this way. And it supposedly put like a outfit together. Whoop, wait, that's locked. Hold on. Shoot, let me try and open this. All right, I gotta grab this piece. This is like a, if I can get that piece out. Okay, if that piece, whoa, whoop. Okay, wait, my arm's in the gear. Hold on, hold on, no, I got it, I got it. I'll just take it. Okay, hold on. Okay, well, it used my, it used my coat to make an outfit on this piece, because that pulls this up. This, this thing is, I, don't, I can't believe I walked in here today and saw this, and it actually does this. Yeah, it's like amazing I'm, they do that. Yeah. Let me, what? what what's, the, what's the asking price for it anyway? For uh, well, now that it's functioning, you know, it's probably gonna be worth more. Um, they're just, they want to put like a high price tag on it because this is, this is the only one known, not only in Chicago, but in the <coughs> world that operates with the Carbonaro effect. You know what the Carbonaro effect is? No, no, no. Oh, oh, the Carbonaro effect is the name of a hidden camera magic TV show. Okay. Right, where a magician does something in an ordinary situation to see if someone will believe it's real. Okay. Kind of like what we're doing right now. Right, right. Because I'm a magician. Right. And this isn't real. Right. And you're on a hidden camera magic show right now. <laughs> Dude. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, it would. Yeah. It would, man. Your name again? Marzell. Marzell. Michael. Yeah. Michael. Dude. Nice to meet you. Nice man. to meet you too. Say hi to everybody in, the, in here. Just wait over there. <laughs> What's happening, y'all? Marcel. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're awesome. Capricornaro <laughs> effect.